My name is Steve Allen, and I've got a secret. I've got a secret. Brought to you tonight by new, richer tasting Dream Whip, the light, fluffy dessert topping that won't wilt. Now, from Hollywood, California, here is I've Got a Secret. Starring Gary Moore. Thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. Good evening and welcome to I've Got a Secret. Tonight our show comes from the glamour capital of the world, Hollywood. It is therefore fitting that we have an all-star cast on our panel. First, sitting in for the sensational Bess Meyerson, we have super colossal Jane Meadows. <laughs> Next, sitting in for America's sweetheart, Bill Cullen. Here is the great profile, George Goebel. <laughs> then, there is the golden girl of West New Jersey, Betsy Palmer. And especially for the ladies, the sex symbol of Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga, <laughs> Mr. Henry Morgan. <laughs> you say I don't ever introduce you nicely. Now, you know that was... Are you all ready to play the game, panel? Yeah. yeah. All right, may we uh, have our first contestant, please? Will you come to... Hamidoy! And Sergeant Vega. Parado! Riposo! Thank you. Now, panel, the only information I can give you about this gentleman to my left is that he holds the rank of General. So for the time being, you will have to call him General X. The gentleman behind us is Sergeant Vega, V-E-G-A, who will act as interpreter for us. Now, gentlemen, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it to the audience at home. Tell me, um, tell me more. Now, uh, panel, to help you classify the secret, the clue concerns something the general and his men have been doing. And if you will direct your questions to Sergeant Vega, he will interpret for the general. Let's start the questions, please, with Jane Meadows. Oh, dear. Well, Sergeant, I'm trying to place that language that you were speaking. It, uh, the only things I know are Chinese and English, and it's neither of those. Is it, uh, a Spanish, uh, uh, are you speaking Spanish? Yes, I'm going you. Nay. Nay. No. Um, this, it would obviously help us to get the secret to know what the language you were speaking. Certainly. Is it a European language? Is this a European language? No. No. South American? No. No. All right, there's $20 down, $60 to go, and we go to Lonesome George. <laughs> Are you friendly? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, uh, did we establish whether it was uh, South America? Yes, I said no. 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 Uh, Hi, Cuba. <laughs> you try Cuba when it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, is it uh, in Asia? No. 
$40 down, $40 to go, and we go to a very puzzled-looking Betsy Palmer. Yes. Um, General and, and Sergeant Vega, have you been doing this in this country? Which you only the extra land or all the land? Uh, yay. And um, nay. Yes, I know. <laughs> the answer, the answer is, 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 is partly in our language. Yes. Par partly in this country. Um, has this been done in the air rather than on land? Which you only con la ario? No. 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 On the land? Yes. yes. $60 down, 20 to go, and we go please to Henry Morgan. Yay and nay. <laughs> I, does anybody other than your group speak this language? Chunietas la language? 30. 30. Hot dog. Are you, um, General? No, dear, you talk to George. He's lonesome still. <laughs> General, this thing that you've been doing, are you guarding something? You very guardano some party? No. No? Do you? Uh, is this group we saw the entire group? Or are, are there more? Do you have more uh, troops, if that's what they are? Do we have a longer troop boy? Nay. No. Nay. No, the question was, how'd you phrase the question, Henry? I don't much care, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's academic at the moment because we've lost the $80. Panel, we played a little trick on you because actually the general does speak English fluently. General, tell us about your country. Well, Gary, my country oh. is dedicated to overthrow the United States. Now, before anybody gets excited and starts throwing stuff, let me explain. The reason we didn't give you the general's name is that it is Harold Wolf, which is a good American name. He is a colonel in the United States Army. In fact, all the soldiers that you have seen are Americans who are part of a special unit whose job it is to play the enemy in Army war games. This, I find this just fascinating. These gentlemen are stationed in Fort Riley, Kansas, the headquarters of the Aggressor Center of the United States Army. Colonel Wolf, will you tell us uh, what the Aggressor Center does? Well, Gary, the purpose of the Aggressor Center is to provide specialized supply, advice, and assistance to U.S. troops that have been designated to play the, the enemy side, mm -hmm. the aggressor side, in our training exercises. And thus, we hope to achieve greater realism in our training and particularly in our intelligence training. Uh, yes, Henry. What is that uh, Kukabura language, though? Yeah. The Kukabura language is Esperanto. Oh, the international Yes, language. Esperanto, the international language, and that is what is spoken in this army. It's a, they have invented, Henry, it's fantastic, they've invented a whole country with a language of its own, history books of its own. Now, the country is called Aggressor Land. Uh, will you tell us something about its history? Aggressor land was created out of the political and military vacuum that exists at the end of World War II. It, of course, has a fictitious history, uh, fictitious armed forces, fictitious political philosophy. However, that political philosophy is aimed at overthrow of the entire world in order to impose their system upon it. And in furtherance of that, uh, the aggressor in the fictitious history uh, attacked the United States as its most uh, principal enemy. Uh, this happened starting in 1947. And so you far... Haven't, you haven't done it yet. You know, well, I'll tell you what they've done. They have, in, in their war games, they have established beachheads in Maine, in uh, Florida, in California, San Francisco to Los Angeles. Uh, beachheads have been established by, by troops under their, under their guidance and their command. They even have a, a, a fifth column of their own in the country. It's a fantastic setup. And I think it's interesting that the aggressor yeah. forces captured Cuba even before Castro did. Oh. <laughs> Which is kind of too bad that Mr. Castro doesn't know that. Colonel Wolf, I want to congratulate you and the Aggressor Center for the fine job that you're doing for us. I want to thank you, Sergeant Vega, and those menacing soldiers we saw before. Thank you and good night. <laughs> now, we will be back with you again in just a moment, but first, let's watch this. Now may we welcome our next contestant, please. Will you come in?
Be seated, sir, if you will. Will you tell our panel, please, what your name is? Patrick Fines. Patrick Fines, T-H-I-N-E-S. Uh, Mr. Fines, if you don't mind, sir, may I ask how old you are? I was 79 the 21st of February. 79. All right, sir, now if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home, and here we go. Well, now that in itself doesn't seem to be too unusual. Can you tell me more? That's unusual. Well, to help you classify Mr. Thine's secret, the clue concerns something he did. We'll start the game where we left off with Henry Morgan, please. Mr. Thine's, this thing you did, was it athletic? Not necessarily. It was, it was physical. No. Did you, uh, is it something you did recently? Yes. And I gather that it's something that a man of your age ordinarily wouldn't do. Well, uh, maybe. Uh, we, I think we have to give you an unqualified yes. Uh, uh, I don't know too many folks his age are doing this nowadays. $20 down, $60 to go. We go, please, to Jane Meadows. Mr. Thines, if it was physical and yet not athletic, would you have done this alone? Yes. Um, would it involve, let's say, uh, walking? Yes. Would it involve walking a great distance? Yes. Would you? $40 down and $40 to go. Impatient buzzer there as we go to George Goble. Did you walk 50 miles? And did you walk 50 miles, sir? Oh, I walked 50 miles, yes. Was it more than 50 miles? Yes. Would it be between 50 and 100 miles? Oh, yes. Uh, the exact figure is not between 50 and 100, no. Oh, it would be more than 100, then. Yeah. <laughs> Panel, Mr. Fines is a great believer in physical fitness. Lately, Thanks a lot. You know, oh, Betsy, I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> oh, but I, I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. Bet Betsy Palmer, please. No. Did you walk here from a great distance to yes. the studio? And, Gary, you tell us what it is, because it's all so close, I'm sure. Yeah, from now on in, we're just playing for, yes. for numbers and, and names, which doesn't uh, uh, become too interesting. But uh, Mr. Thine's a great believer in physical fitness. Lately, there's been a great deal of talk about the 50-mile hikes because of President Kennedy's program, but you can't expect Mr. Thine's to follow that regime exactly. He has his own standards. He took a walk to our studio today. It wasn't 50-mile hike, but he did walk to our studio here in Hollywood from San Diego. Oh. 138 miles, and he did it in 28 and a half hours. Now, Mr. Times, I know that your interest in hiking preceded Mr. Kennedy's physical fitness program. What is the longest hike you have ever taken? From San Diego to New York. San Diego to New York, and how many times did you do that, sir? 18 trips across. 18 times. Now, he is 79 years old, so understandably that your last trip on foot from San Diego to New York must have been a long time ago. No, it was last September, October, and November. This is a truly remarkable gentleman. I know that he makes these walks to raise money for crippled and handicapped children, and for this reason, he has a lifetime walking record of 265,181 miles, a most impressive record. And I'd like to add that when it comes to physical fitness, I am no slouch either. I started wearing a pedometer three days ago to show you how far you walk. And I hope President Kennedy is watching, because as of this moment, in only three days, I have walked 17 miles. <laughs> Mr. Thines, thank you very much for being with us tonight. I would walk center stage to bid you good night, but frankly, I'm pooped. You're my okay. only way. special guest this evening is an old friend whose late evening show is currently the rage of all the critics all over the country. This is his latest album. It is called Funny Phone Calls. It was recorded right from his show, and the album is going to be just as big a hit as Steve's show is itself. Here is Steve Allen.
I suppose you recognize one or two of the folks on the panel. They all look mighty familiar. <laughs> I'm so delighted that you have made this album because that particular feature is one of my favorites on your show. And uh, for the benefit of those of you who haven't seen it uh, on the air, which is unlikely, but I'll explain that Steve uses a telephone to answer ads and to deliver messages on behalf of the members of the studio audience, and he gets real wild. <laughs> oh, Gary, I'm glad that's your opinion of it because I thought that tonight the uh, panel might like to try its hand, and in uh, making plans for that, I brought along, just happen to have, as the saying goes, a couple of telephones here. Just happen to have a couple of phones. So, all right, but well, you want to tell them what they have to do? Well, if Jane and George will step right over here, yes, I'll be glad to explain. Now, before the show went on the air, uh, we asked the members of our studio audience here if they knew any young lady who might be interested in a blind date. And uh, we... <laughs> gasping out there. We looked through a lot of cards and we selected uh, this one right here. It has the name on it of a young lady, uh, Mabry Burns. Is it Mabry or Mabry? Whoever. Well, we'll try Mabry. So now, it's a local call here in Hollywood. And if you get her on the phone, tell her that you'd like to get a blind date for your bashful brother, George. And then if you get her interested, put George on and see if he can wrap it up, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe Burns. What do we do while you're dialing? You know, we've never been able to figure that out on our <laughs> show. It's, it's always a uh, kind of a stage. I'll tell you, why don't you uh, do a card trick or dance or do something for a second here while I... Uh, there you go. Now, let's see the phone number. Roy on the bounce and coming. <laughs> Mark. Oh, I hope she's home. Sometimes they're not. I know that. Oh, we have an offer. We, we, we have another card. Alice. Alice and my brother George. Yeah. All right. Maybe in the tub. <laughs> what is the name of the person who uh, gave us this? Uh, could you call out your name, whoever you are, who gave us this card? Pardon? Sheila. 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 Good. Mention you're a friend of Sheila. Okay. You think she's home now, Sheila? I just left her. Well, you just left her. Uh -huh. She was probably trying to get rid of you. <laughs> The minute you were out, boom, I think she headed for the hill. I guess. How old is she? 22. Well, I guess uh, we we'll better try an alternate, though, because I don't right. think we're getting any answer there. Strike one on that. Well, we're going to now call uh, all Can of the other side. Can I have this one for later? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try another number here, Gare. Gloria Stepania. Stepanian. Stepanian, something yeah. like that. Uh, Nine. One. One. Okay. Two. <gasps> Two. If I hear anything <laughs> happening, Jane, I'll hand you the phone. Good. Quick as a wink. Yeah, we never did solve this problem of what to do. You better dance or card tricks. <laughs> card tricks, that would be nice. <laughs> you getting a ring? Yeah, we got a ring. We got two rings. <laughs> We're going to get a million rings. Um, is this Gloria? Uh, no. Hold the line, dear. Thank you. <laughs> Deal with her if you have to. Hello? Gloria? Yes? Oh, hi. This is Alice Fink. Yes. I'm a, uh, <laughs> I'm a friend of uh, Doris O'Connor's. Yes. And, uh, we were talking tonight about my brother, who is not married, and, um, she met him and thought he was terribly attractive and mentioned you and thought that you might like to meet him and possibly, uh, if you liked him too, go out with him. Would you, uh, does that sound interesting to you? Who did you say this was? This is Alice Fink. Oh, a friend of yours? Yeah, I'm a friend of, uh, Doris's, and my brother Georgie Fink is right here, and he's very anxious to talk to you. Will you speak to him? Yes, uh-huh. Good. He's right here. Hi, Doris. Listen, my name is not George Fink. Our, our name is really Johnson, but my sister changed her name to Fink. <laughs> but uh, uh, I really don't know what to say. This is the first time I've ever asked any, anybody for a date over the telephone. And, uh, but I'm very wholesome. <laughs> What's that last in the background? What, what is this, Olga? Well, I, we got a bunch of idiots here. <laughs> They, they laugh. They laugh at anything. Some of these people, you know. No, this is uh, what? Well, who is this? Seriously. This, this is George Johnson. Uh, my maiden name is Fink. <laughs> Listen, Gloria. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to talk to you longer, but we're running out of time. This is Steve Allen calling you. Yes, sir. Oh! You know about me, Gloria? Yeah. Hey, Gloria. <laughs> and, and I'm calling. I'm calling you on Gary Moore's. I've got a secret show, and you've been talking to George Goble and Jane Meadows. I've been talking to... I have? Really? I don't believe it. Yes. 
We really have, and, and uh, we're going to have somebody else talk to you now, and, and we're going to make it worth your while to have talked to us, aren't we, Gary? Yes, we Let's are. get it settled. Have we got the date? Uh, Any time. You name it, and I'll be right <laughs> I'll tell you what Don't you do. do I have another stunt in mind. You want to try the second stunt? Yes, try the uh, second stunt. All right. Second we'll have the, the uh, blind date crew stand by for just right. a moment here because um, we did something <laughs> else. We also asked our studio audience to give the name and home phone number of any businessman that they knew in the New York area. And we uh, selected this gentleman's name right here from the, uh, the stack we got, uh, Mr. David Anderson. He's a landscape artist in Long Island. Now. I'm going to uh, dial the area code and the number, and the call will go right through. Now, Betsy and Henry, would you come over here, please? Uh, we're going to ask you, Betsy, to pretend that you are the telephone operator on this phone here, and you will have to convince Mr. Anderson uh, that he, he should... Uh, well, he probably won't be there either. <laughs> no. But anyway, if he has tried to get him to accept a collect call from, from Hollywood... Mark. Yes, uh, from... Uh, and that's right. Mention Henry Morgan, okay. the famous television star, and... Uh, We'll tell him that we got the uh, name here from a Mr. Frank Rantz in the audience. Won't work. Uh, R-A-N-T-Z, I guess that's how you pronounce All it. Right. He's in Hawaii right now. <laughs> With our luck, that is probably the way. I, well, we'll see what happens here. And uh, since you're going to give him a lot of business, you want him to do some landscaping, you thought it would be okay for a click. Uh, you, you, you want him to landscape your, your, your stuff? And uh, his sister has gone out with George. No, go out with Mabry. We might be able to fix that up, though. Well, that's... Should we get George and Dave too? Please, just in case this one doesn't come through. This, this spot may turn out to be historic. <laughs> <laughs> this may be a TV last. <laughs> you getting any ring? This may kill this routine on my show, too. You realize? <laughs> no, this often happens in our show, but once every two, three weeks, we do hit a blank. Uh, we could play the record. Yeah, I've never... <laughs> you know, we we can only get Steve's record. We could play it. There is. Mr. David Anderson? Yes. This is the uh, operator from, New, uh, from Los Angeles, and I would like to know whether you would receive a collect call from Mr. Henry Morgan of the I've Got a Secret show who is here in Hollywood. No. You wouldn't? I don't know. Uh, any uh, Henry Morgan? You, you don't know who? Uh, the, the you know who you sound like? The actor? Doesn't that sound like Bill Cullen? <laughs> no. Mr. Uh, Mr. Anderson, yes, this is Henry Morgan, the actor. Will you receive a call from him? No, I won't take any call from him. Uh, I want, uh, how much? It's Bill. It's got to be. It isn't? It isn't? How much? Well, it won't be very much, sir. We're calling late in the day. Well, uh, why don't he pay? Why don't he pay? Why don't he pay? Why don't you pay, Mr. Morgan? Uh, Mr. Anderson? Uh, yeah. This is Henry Morgan. Uh, I'm in receiving the call, sir, Mr. Anderson. You're going to take the collect charges? No. I can't let you speak, Mr. Morgan, unless... <laughs> well, explain that it's an emergency. It's an emergency. Oh. Will you receive them, Mr. Anderson? Uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Uh, this is a little embarrassing to uh, have you pay for the call. Uh, I intend to reimburse you, of course, but a friend of yours here in Hollywood gave me your name, and I uh, got so much interested in the whole proposition that uh, you're a landscape artist. Do you know Frank Rance? Oh, yeah, yeah. How, how, how is Frank? Frank's marvelous. <laughs> Better than ever. He has a slight cold, but that buzzing in his ears is gone. Uh, he's loosened his collar. That's one thing. He's all right. Yeah, he's a good fellow. He talks funny, but he's all right. He talks a little funny, yeah. L look, uh, actually, I think I'm going to stick him with the call, but what I wanted from you was I have a terrace, and I wondered, were you, do you do that kind of landscape work? Uh, I'll break, uh, Mr. Martin. Henry, I want to break in to tell you that uh, a strange thing happened a moment ago. Betsy guessed it. You're talking to Bill Cullen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bill? I'll never be an actor like Henry on to tell the truth. How are you? It's Jane. Huh? How are you, dear? Hi, Jane. How are you? Fine. Good. And Steve's right here. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, well, we can't afford it to build a large just, hand for Steve Allen. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 
Well, friends, that does us in from Hollywood for this week. We hope that you have enjoyed it. Next week, our special guest will be Miss Betty Davis. It'll be the first time she's been on our show, so we hope to see you then. Until then, speaking for all the panel, this is Gary Moore saying be very kind to each other, will you? And goodbye out there. Got a Secret has been brought to you tonight by Light Fluffy Dream Whip Dessert Cup. Another fine product of General Food. Preceding program was pre-recorded. This is Vern Bennett speaking. My name is Steve Allen and I've got a secret. Got a secret. Brought to you tonight by new, richer tasting Dream Whip, the light, fluffy dessert topping that won't wilt. Now from Hollywood, California, here is I've Got a Secret. That's the word. That's the word. I didn't know. Maldestra, turno, presento, Almiloy. Starring Gary Moore. Thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. Good evening and welcome to I've Got a Secret. Tonight, our show comes from the glamour capital of the world, Hollywood. It is therefore fitting that we have an all-star cast on our panel. First, sitting in for the sensational Bess Meyerson, we have super-colossal Jane Meadows. <laughs> Next, sitting in for America's sweetheart, Bill Cullen. Here is the great profile, George Goebel. There is the golden girl of West New Jersey, Betsy Palmer. And especially for the ladies, the sex symbol of Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga, <laughs> Mr. Henry Morgan. <laughs> you say I don't ever introduce you nicely. Now, you know that was... Are you all ready to play the game, panel? Yeah. yeah. All right. May we uh, have our first contestant, please? Will you come? Presento, Amiloy. And Sergeant Vega. Parado, riposo. Thank you. Now, panel, the only information I can give you about this gentleman to 